What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's happening with Tesla stock and also talk about some very important tweets from the man with the myth of legend himself, Elon Musk, as he's giving us a lot of information about Tesla, what he thinks about the new updates that are coming out and his opinions on different events that involve the company. But before I break the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and deposit $100, you're guaranteed seven free stocks and offer ends in just about two and a half weeks. Anyways, for Tesla right now, the share price is looking quite bearish as we're making lower highs and lower lows and continuing to fall. And Tesla's trying to hold the support at this 166 to 167 area. If we do lose this, there could be more downside coming. Despite this, there were a lot of things that Elon Musk had to say about Tesla, which are very important. So I want to now focus more on that, a little bit less on the chart. So I saw a lot of tweets from Elon Musk, actually, from the last about day and a half. And the reason why this is very important is because... You know, Musk, he oftentimes doesn't talk as much about Tesla. There were a lot of situations where he didn't even mention much about Tesla for quite some time. Uh, but finally, we're actually hearing him tweeting a lot, giving his opinions and thoughts on events. So I wanted to really share this with you because Musk is the CEO of Tesla. Whether you like him or not, whether you agree with him or not, that's all up to you guys. You have the right to have your opinion. But I also want to at least give you guys some insights on what I've seen. Because let me make it very clear. The media does not show you everything Elon Musk says, so it's very easy for them to focus on certain things at a certain time, which could help paint certain narratives. And I don't think that that's very sufficient. I just want to show you guys his latest tweets from the last about day and a half. So the first thing he mentions is that just to reiterate, Tesla will spend well over $500 million expanding their supercharger network to create thousands of new chargers this year. That's just on new sites and expansions, not counting operation costs, which are much higher. So Musk is making it very clear that, look, the media was telling us, <laughs> excuse me, the media was telling us that Tesla has, you know, they, they've fired the entire supercharger network team. Tesla's like stepping away from it. This is not good news for Tesla, this and that. But Musk is making it very clear that they're actually spending well over $500 million to continue to expand the network, and they're going to likely be continuing to grow in that sector. Now, with the layoffs for Tesla, this is not going to last forever. Of course, Tesla will rehire a lot of employees, and they're kind of trying to flush out and kind of refresh their overall workforce right now. Uh, it's very sad news simultaneously for the people that are you know, great employees who are losing their jobs. It's unfortunate, but things like this happen during times like this. So Tesla needs to continue to expand these supercharger networks because you're going to have other companies like Ford, like GM, and the list goes on. All these companies will be continuing to share them. So Tesla has to do this. I think this is out of necessity, and this is very grateful, great news to hear. So very, very awesome stuff right here. Very, very interesting. Moving forward, Musk also started a supercharger community. So for people out there who are interested in learning about this, this is going to be very huge. And I can't wait to see what else they say about this business. Because you have to remember, the supercharger business is going to be worth billions. This is going to be a big sector in Tesla's revenue moving forward. So I think that this is very important. Uh, there's also been a lot of talk about what happened involving Tesla uh, on Friday. So basically, uh, in Germany, there's been a national holiday that was going on. And the German Gigafactory in Tesla was actually just kind of halted, at least for the holiday, just temporarily. And then what happened was there were a lot of people that came in as protesters and they tried to get past many lines, trying to get very close to the Gigafactory. Uh, I didn't see any news about them getting inside, but they were trying to essentially get in, trespass and do all sorts of things like this. So Musk is kind of, I guess you could say he's insinuating some things. He's just like asking questions on if anyone has ideas on who is orchestrating and funding this. So he thinks it's very suspicious and he's been talking a lot about that. Uh, there's been a lot of news about this, about how, uh, you know, pepper spray has to be used against these protesters. It's just going insane. And uh, people are questioning whether or not this is just truly against the car companies, because you have to remember that there's no protest going on right now from what I'm seeing, according to reports at, at the BMW 9 series or BMW 7 series, excuse me, and the Mercedes S class or anything else like that. Not, no one else is kind of protesting those. They're just protesting Tesla. So Musk is saying that something super weird is going on as Tesla was the only car company attacked. And on top of this, um, you have to make it very clear that they do have an incentive to do so. That is the fact that they're not really uh, in accordance with and also in agreement with uh, the whole notion of Tesla expanding the Gigafactory. Uh, they think it's going to cause more pollution and such. So that is their opinion. Uh, they do have the right to protest, but I only support pre uh, peaceful protesting, nothing that involves violence or anything like that. So this is pretty crazy. A lot of crazy stuff has been going on. Uh, someone else is asking, 
Why are they going after electric cars? Musk is once again saying that something strange is going on. He's very suspicious of this. And he also said that there's a lot more than what meets the eye because he thinks that there's someone else involved in this. It's all intentional. It's all against Tesla. Who knows, guys? That's not my job to figure out. I'm just trying to report what the news is saying. Uh, so this is what's been going on, and that's something that's very important. Uh, there's also been a lot of news about this. So news came out that Ford has begun cutting orders from the battery suppliers, sadly. And that's because their EV losses are topping over $100,000 per car. So I want to make it very clear that during these times with the high margins and what's been happening with their supply chains, Ford is losing a lot of money on their EV sector. They're trying to offset this with growth in the other sectors, but the EV sector is still not a very, very strong place for them. And they were trying to prioritize like hybrids over EVs. There's been a lot of talk about that. So I want to make it very clear that this gives me more and more appreciation of Musk and Tesla. Musk tweeted that making a great electric car at a great price is extremely difficult, and he is correct about that. Coming up with the idea and the concept is something that is very doable, but mass producing it, making it affordable, that is a completely different story, and that's something worth noting. So, you know, huge shout out to the entire Tesla team for what they've achieved. You have to give them recognition, making these Teslas more affordable, making them, you know, get, getting a profit off of them is just absolutely insane. And the fact that they achieved this just gives them a lot of recognition, in my opinion, puts Tesla ahead of the game. And I also wish the best for Ford. I know that uh, things are difficult for them with their EV sector, but they still make fantastic cars out there. I mean, uh, I, I was was a fan of like, the Ford GT and things like that. Uh, but I want to make it very clear that with what Ford is doing, uh, they're, they're in a very, very difficult place right now when it comes to the EV sector uh, for their segments right now. So they're prioritizing hybrids right now. They're really struggling. They're kind of cutting orders right now. It's very tough for them. Uh, it's also tough for Tesla, so you have to give them a lot of credit because it's difficult for all these different companies together. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the FSD and its developments. So you guys can see right here. Uh, once again, the FSD is now getting a lot better at kind of like recognizing handheld stop signals, uh, hand signals given by road workers, and all sorts of things like that. So something very, very cool. Uh, there were times where uh, in construction zones, there were a lot of issues with this in FSD 12. So now the new updated version is getting a lot better at that. So yeah, once again, Musk said he wouldn't count on this in 12.3, but in 12.4, it's a big improvement and 12.5 might nail it. So basically they've made a lot of improvements at being able to identify different roadblocks. You know, people have hand signals and such trying to like guide cars to stop using FSD. Uh, it's not perfect right now. Even Musk admit that for the 12.4 version, but there are a lot of improvements being made and they might nail it for 12.5. Now, there's been a lot of talk right here about a lot of improvements. They made improvements uh, and basically squashed bugs. So X is even better for people out there. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about this. Uh, these are some more descriptions for the in-car updates for the Tesla, which is pretty funny. Uh, the X updates are very interesting too. Uh, Musk said that all updates should include details of what was improved. So that is true. And they're making a lot of improvements when it comes to like nags and things like that. I'll talk more about that in maybe like another video. There's also been talk right over here from Tesla Economics about how people only see the results and think it's easy. So there's actually, I think, a picture of Musk right here, how he's like squatting, kind of going through uh, a lot of things that have been happening, you know, and Musk is saying that there were a lot of tough times that Tesla had to go through. I, so I, I agree, you know, you have to make it very clear that, uh, you know, the results that Tesla have achieved were not easy whatsoever. It required, you know, Musk working insanely hard, especially the entire team to get to where they are. You have to really appreciate the fact that these other EVs are very, very far behind uh, Tesla. Tesla's, I, I wouldn't say they're behind. It's more like Tesla's just far ahead. Uh, and they're developing so many things simultaneously. It's not just cars. It's, you know, the supercomputers that they're working on. Uh, Everything is connected to a giant dojo supercomputer. And then that is allowing them to continue to not only, uh, you know, put the data together and kind of articulate it, but put it together in a way where they could learn from other mistakes in the past. I guess that's like another way you could kind of describe it. So the robotics technology, the integration of AI and their vehicles, their machine learning and their uh, FSD tools are just super, super incredible. It gives me a lot of pride when it comes to investing in Tesla and being a part of this company and what they're actually trying to achieve. Tesla FSD versus Mercedes uh, driver assistance. So they're basically giving Mercedes driver assistance a much better score than that of Tesla, according to these reports. But looking at data, uh, these reports actually found that the Tesla uh, FSD does have a lot more improvements and it does tend to be better when it comes to uh, a lot of different factors. Because the one thing you have to remember is that uh, a lot of sources are very biased against Tesla. 
And although I do give credit to Mercedes for improvements, they're not as at the level that Tesla's at, in my opinion, because Tesla has a lot more data to go based off of. There's been a lot more machine learning that they've been focused on for a very, very long time. And Elon Musk was also talking about how Tesla is half a decade ahead or more of Mercedes and these other companies. In fact, I don't think there's any company that's on par with Tesla at this. So I'm very, very excited for what the future is going to hold for FSD. Uh, different people may have their different views of it, but I think that that's going to be very lucrative for Tesla. And what else they're developing from robo taxis and such is going to be very helpful as well. So with that being said, you may agree or disagree with Elon Musk. That's your choice, guys. I will respect your opinion no matter what, no matter what, excuse me. And I want to make it very clear that, um, you know, what Musk has been saying is very important for the development. He is very engaged in Tesla right now. Uh, I've been seeing him tweeting more about Tesla now than recently. And I want to make it very clear that, you know, his vision for FSD, autonomous technology, the growth in the company, and their supercharger network is just good news for the company, at least for the long term. Yes, the share price is weak right now, approaching support and looking a little bit more bearish, at least in terms of the trend for now. But just know that Elon Musk and the team are doing a good job, at least for the long term, and they're going to overcome a lot of hurdles for this year. Why are there hurdles? Well, interest rates are high. We're starting to see consumer spending slowing down. Demand for them is also slowing down as well. There's been a lot of difficulties for people out there when it comes to develop, developments. So I want to make it very, uh, very, very clear that Tesla has hardships for this year, but for the long term, everything Musk is talking about in developing is very bullish, very awesome. And I can't wait for what the future holds. That is your update on Elon Musk. I'm very glad that he is still the CEO. I know that people have different views and I know that he tends to be very contentious, but I still think that we should appreciate the good that he brings to the company. So once again, guys, my goal is just to be very unbiased and talk about what he's been tweeting about and just tell you guys the truth. So with that being said, these are the latest tweets from Elon Musk for the past about a day and a half, almost two days. And we'll see what else comes out for the future. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for listening and peace out.